Hey you. <laughs> happy New Year. Happy, 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 happy 2019. It's going to be a great year, all right? All right, let's talk about the latest episode of Skinny Girl in Transit. Hey you, my name is Adeni here. Very, very nice to meet you, okay? Say hello in the comment section. <laughs> now I'm not asking you. I'm telling you to adjust your attitude towards Tiwa. So you I called me? Shut up and listen to me while I speak. Okay, so we are still on SGIT and we are still planning this wedding. This wedding, it is worthy of note, all right, that this wedding was supposed to happen in 2018. But here we are, it's 2019 and we still don't have a wedding. But no worries, we are very patient and we shall wait. Because if we tarry long enough, the wedding shall happen. <laughs> Speaking of the wedding, Mommy Tua has come again. She decided to hire Mr. Lambe. A photographer named Mr. Lambe, whose best work was done in 2005. This is 2019. Even me, I said, ah, 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 mommy, Tiwa, how now? How? You know, I'm glad Tiwa decided to speak with Auntie Dukwe rather than her mom, because her mom would have gone ballistics and would have been hysterical about the whole thing and wouldn't have been thinking logically. Mommy Tiwa is very dramatic so she would have been very emotional about the whole conversation about me they having a child. So I'm glad that Auntie Dukwe was calm enough to be able to talk to Tiwa and make her realize that listen, whether he has a baby or he has 10, okay maybe 10 is exaggerating here. <laughs> well I was glad that she was able to tell Tiwa that whether this man has a child or not, when you say you love someone you have to embrace the, all of them and whatever baggage they come with and in this case it just so happens to be a child finally they are talking i think auntie dupe should be the counselor they are going to because did you see the difference Tiwa spoke with auntie dupe they had a conversation she gave us solid advice and then our next almost argument with me they ended up being a conversation when they were talking about the contracts with abc and she was saying i signed a non-disclosure and then they hugged each other and whatnot and they hugged her whatever you know they were able to have a conversation about it and it didn't turn into an argument based on didi's conversation with shalewa i'm guessing that there really isn't anything more to didi's behavior rather than she's just having fun, which is strange anyway. But, be, you know, because based on conversation, she was like, oh, things just didn't work out with herself and Obina, and, you know, she just decided to keep him moving, yada, yada, yada. But again, it's still like, okay, you're keeping him moving, but you're just going from one guy to the other, swiping left and right and whatever. I just thought, if that's the explanation, then I guess we'll just have to take it as what it is. But it's just strange, really. Shalewa, on the other hand, is doubting herself about Mohammed. But I think that she made, like I said last week, she made the best decision by telling Mohammed to just boggle off, you know. So naturally, she would miss him. So I guess she's probably missing him. And she's like, oh, was I acting cray cray or something? But oh, this is 2019. They are not saying cray cray again. <laughs> Meanwhile, this season, it seems like everyone is having man issue because even Bosi won't coco is having man issue like <laughs> finally finally when Tiwa confronted or decided to stand up to Derry, I was just clapping yes sister go sister go sister just give her one small slap just one small gentle slap you know just a little I didn't get the slap but I was still very excited because I was like Finally, you have to stand up to this lady. If not, she's going to keep walking all over you. I don't care that you are reserved or you are gentle or she's your mother-in-law, your sister-in-law. Stand up to her, girl. So I think Tiwa, like, call me. Call me Tiwa. <laughs> no, but seriously, did you guys see the way Darren started retreating when Tiwa was pressing up against her and you could tell she was terrified and she was scared that oh what, what was Tiwa going to do was Tiwa going to hit her or whatever you know and I, I, I thought it was symbolic really that eventually when you rise up to certain situations I'm being deep now but it's okay <laughs> because it's 2019 <laughs> but seriously when you stand up to certain situations that just seem to be movable that's when you'd realize that oh they actually seem to be moving back and this wall is actually not a wall it's just an imaginary wall you get so I really liked that scene. 
And whilst I was still basking in the euphoria of the whole confrontation between Tiwa and Demi, Tiwa goes ahead to tell Mide, oh, this was what happened with, with, with your sister. And what does Mide do? My brothers and sisters in the Lord, I was so upset. I was with Tiwa when she said, wait, am I the one jazzing you or is it your sister that is jazzing you? Because it just made absolutely no sense. Mide once again was defending his sister and was making excuses for her. So I was definitely on Tiwa's side because I was like, why is Mide so blinded by Derry's fault? She's not a child. She's not five. She's not ten. She's a grown woman my best sin this season <laughs> my best sin yet this season hands down mide for president when Derry entered mide's office and he was like no no need to sit i knew it was about to go down and when he started giving it to her and when she interrupted him and he was like i'm still talking i was like yes this is the mid that we've been waiting for this is the mid that we've been campaigning for this is the mid that we love this is the mid that doesn't take nonsense or rubbish but then typical behavior of a bully when they are caught red and they start acting as if they are the victim and that was exactly what they did when she started crying oh daddy is sick and you're getting married and i feel i was sitting alone be shut up Okay, Sh shut up. You've been, you've been miserable even before Mide got engaged to Tiwa. So what are you saying? So I think Derry's excuses are lame and she was just trying to victimize herself so that she could, uh, uh, she could have Mide's sympathy and whatever. But guess what? We ain't falling for it, okay? Well, I wish, I really do wish that scene had ended with Mide just walking out, leaving her crying and just not apologizing, just he finishes yelling at her and he just walks out. And then maybe later when he has calmed down or whatever, he cannot apologize for yelling at her and then, you know, yada, yada, yada. The pre-wedding shoes was looking so, so cute. It was looking so cute. I was just like, oh, with their denim shirts and black trousers. They look, you have to admit, Mide and Tiwa look very good together. But unfortunately, I think the phone call Mide got at the end of the episode was probably from his mom saying, oh, you know, your dad has passed. Yeah, I'm thinking that's what that might be. What do you guys think of this episode of Skinny Girl in Transit? And what do you think of the obvious? Yes, the obvious. I'm trying so hard not to talk about it because I want to hear what you guys think, okay? Whatever your thoughts are, let me know down below in the comment section. Happy New Year again. New things, great things, positive things this year. I love you guys so, so much. I'm so happy we are here together in the new year and greater things are in store for us in Jesus' name. Amen. I love you so much. Do remember to remain in God and God bless you. Bye. 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 Ouch.